so confused. confused. <laughs> All right, here's a question. No, I have to make a stop at Lucky Jones. Have any of you ever been around to eat at Gruber's restaurant? Yeah. I think I Is was. Is this recording on it? Yeah. Hey. Okay, now, Eleanor says... Isn't that great? <laughs> Is it recording It's now? HD, though. But it's a tape. <laughs> Eleanor, it's actually better because Eleanor says I can, I've got that like there's never things. been a better I can restaurant. There is one now this needs to be that's better than we Gruber's. Gruber's is stuff. the best and it was always the best yeah. and it's the best okay. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well, memory is, a, memory is an interesting <laughs> thing. Was she right? I don't know. I, no, I know she's not <laughs> right because there, at that time, there were only six eight restaurants that were. Lisa, good. you're going to have to just chime now, in because I get sick of my own voice. So here's all of it. Sit down. Okay, oh, frame them. About Sit, Sit down. down. Sit up straight. Sit together. No punching. No oh, did you see hair. what you just did? Huh? Sit close together like you uh, Come on. Pretend you love you're in the frame. Pretend okay. you love each other. We do, as a matter of fact. What is this? All right, we'll ask the questions. We'll have Eleanor answer first, and then you answer. He's it's older. Simple. He's older. Jim, you want to say the date? Give us a trial day. one before you start. Okay, here's a trial one. What's what your, is your name? name? <laughs> My now, that's name the first is question. My name is Young Manson. I come Okay, <laughs> Jim, tell me. What is my name? Today is Sunday, March 6th. It's 1.18 in the afternoon. What year what is it? What year? 2016. Okay, what is your full name? Why did your parents select this name for you? And did you have a nickname? My name is Eleanor Joyce Wiseman. Perlman. Nee Perlman. Nee Perlman. I have a feeling my mother selected Eleanor because her husband, Eleanor Roosevelt's husband, was president of the United States then. The Joyce, I don't have any clue. Because you were the joy of her life? No, because how would she know? I was just born. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't see you sitting. Did you have a nickname? Is yes, that a camera? My friends called, Wait. My one girlfriend called me Ellie or Alec, which I hate. Alec? Yeah, she used to call me yeah. Alec. I said, that doesn't even What friend? What friend? Gloria. My friend Gloria left. Oliver Shulman. Okay. Dad? What's your full name? Why did your Me parents name you? My that? full name is Melvin, M E L V I N, Perlman. E E A R L M A N. What's the middle name? You had to write that Oh down. boy. <laughs> well, I adopted a middle name when I was 14 or 15, and that was Lancelot. <laughs> That never seemed to go. <laughs> but then later, when I was in the, my 60s, I decided I needed a middle name, so I gave myself the middle name of Dave. David. Okay. Why'd you pick that? Why'd I use David? Because there's a lot of, I, it's a, a, it's a famous Jewish name. B, there were a lot of people in my life whose name was David that I loved and I thought it was a good name. And that's why. But I don't, I don't use it too much because I realized if you start doing that, the, all the records get all mixed up. And then you get records from, from, from government agencies that get mixed up. So I said, Melvin. I have to interject. Turn that off. I was the only one in our, of our immediate family that had a middle name. My father didn't have one. My mother didn't have one. He didn't have one really, and I was maybe it wasn't popular though. Maybe to have oh, middle I names. Know. I don't know. Okay. When um, and where were you born? Oh, that was my question. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, at Mount Sinai Hospital. When? Mal? Oh, October nineteenth, nineteen thirty-six. I was born at. Uh, Babies and Children's Hospital, University <laughs> Hospital. Okay, Ellen. It's January 7th, 1933. This is a contested answer. Now, I, <laughs> I, 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 I recollect I was. Told you weren't born, so how do you no, know? No, when I was old, that he was born at St. Luke's Hospital. 
St. Luke's Hospital. Go check the <laughs> records. Okay, in Cleveland, Ohio. In Cleveland, Ohio. How did your family come to live in Cleveland, Ohio? I'm asking. Well, the, when our know. parents came over from Russia, um, first my father came and went lived in New York, first, didn't he? And second, my grandpa came ahead of my mother and aunt and grandma, and my grandpa set up uh, a family, I guess he had relatives here in Cleveland, Ohio. He was here about six, seven years before they came uh, home, came back from Russia. What was Two, his name? His name was Labrish or Lewis Friedman. And actually, they Lewis. originally spelled it F-R-I-D-M-A-N, but my grandfather changed it to F-R-I-E-D, or they changed it when he came over from Ellis Island. And where, do you know where in Russia they came from? Tativ. In the Ukraine. Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, were there other family members in the area who, did you ask that already? No. Were there other family members in the area and who? My mother's side, in fact, my mother came over with a cousin of theirs of my, it was really on my grandpa's side. Her name was Nisha or Nellie. And I guess my grandmother's brothers, she had two or th two, three brothers. One was, one was, Sam, one called himself Schmielik, one called himself Schleimi, and then there was. <laughs> <laughs> Call himself Klesman and one call himself Klassman. What were their names again? <laughs> Schmielik and Schlo and Schloimi. <laughs> Schlomo? And the I third one was David. David. Huh? The third Shlomo. one was David. Yeah, his name was David. Schlielik, Schlomo, and David. <laughs> Schmiel Schlomazel. Okay, what else? That's it. We're what done. was the house, apartment, farm, etc. like? How many rooms? So the, the house you grew up in, Susie? Yes. Wait, was, okay. wait, step back. Was your Ida? Where, she was. From, her family was from Tativ also. But she was the one from Tativ. I don't know where. Where was Dad's home? Oh. If you don't let me talk. No. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, go ahead. Well, my father was born in um, another part of Russia that wasn't Russia. In, I, I can't think of the name of it, but I will. Um, and he had three, three brothers. And I would say at around 1918, he was born in 19, 1899, and so he was about 18, and his brothers came over here, and I think they, they lived in New York for a while. And then, I'm not sure the reason why they moved to Cleveland. I don't think there were any relatives of his, but whatever, they moved to Cleveland. And all four, no, I take it back, all three of the brothers, one brother stayed in New York. Well, two stayed originally. Irv stayed there and Sam. And then after Nate and and Lou came here and started a business, Irv came. But he he lived they lived in New York for quite a while. So there were four brothers. Right. Who was the oldest? Okay. Um Sam was the oldest. Okay. Then Irving or Irv. Then my dad, Lou and then Nate. And as I recollect, my dad was born on November 5th, 1899. And according to him, Nate was born in November of, two, of 1900 19. on the same day, on November 5th. But Uncle Nate denied that his whole time. But 
My father said no. He we'll was look, born we'll go the, to the records for that. Did one. you know wait, wait, the wait, wait, grandparents? Wait. I don't recall my. I recall, of course, my maternal grandparents. No, the, but no, I do not remember. You might remember because you were older, Mel. He was. Still oh, is. Papa yeah, Aaron, were. I get to talk again. Mm -hmm. Um. First of all, the, they were born in Lithuania, which was then part of Russia. I think. Soviet Union. Hmm? It wasn't. No, it was, no, it was, it was, no Soviet, Soviet Union. It was not part of Russia. Soviet Union. Anyhow. No, well. It was part of the Soviet uh, Union. It was not part of Russia. I am not it sure. Union yet. No. Well, I, know I, I, never, I never met, and I'm not sure, about my father's mother. I, I don't know. But I did meet my father's grandfather. Uh, when he came to Cleveland, and he was married to some woman who they, of course, said it's my grandmother, but she was not his mother. His wife. His wife. No, uh, your mother. It's not his mother. Okay. My father's mother. Tiny? She was not my father's no. mother. Right. She's not your grandmother. Now, Mel, Didn't who? I say that? No. wait. Anne and, and Gladys, and there was another one, there was Ida, who died. Yeah, when she was young. I don't know, they, I think, were half-sisters. That's all I know. I, they were, I mean, I called my, their children cousins. They were my first and cousins. When you say New York, do you know where in New York they live? Yeah, in, Bro in Brooklyn, I think. I, I would probably disagree with that. I would say they most Bronx. likely lived in the... Air, the Jewish area in Manhattan. Lower East Lower Side. Side. Yeah, Lower, Lower East Side. Side. Yeah. I You're probably right. Does anybody have an address? That would be really fun. Are you kidding? Okay. Well, yeah. that's what Ancestry.com has. Okay. <clears throat> what was, the, what oh, was their now, last name? Okay, when they came over, and it shows I have some papers upstairs, I think. It, their name was Pertzik, but when they came over from Ellis Island, it was changed to Perlman. <clears throat> So I don't know. What do you think, Bill? I I don't know. I I always, I mean, I just assume that my grandfather's name was Perlman, but which is probably true, but it, it probably so. When he it, because my dad's name was Perlman, they were all named Perlman, so I'm assuming that they took their father's name. Well, yes, but. Well, what I, their name was, and then when they came over from Ellis Island, and I think there's a paper upstairs that says Peretzik. See? Okay, moving on. So what I was the actually, house like when you were growing up? I actually have some papers on this. What was your house like growing up? Pardon me? What was your house like? What were their bathrooms? House. 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 Well, we, and where was it? The first house is Ullman Avenue in Cleveland. <clears throat> and if you need the address, I have it. And when did you move? <laughs> one one eight. It was one one eight oh eight. I don't know. Do you know where where is Ullman Avenue? Well, Ullman let me. Avenue would run from East 123rd Street to Lakeview Avenue. And right on the corner of our street on, on 123rd was a delicatessen, right? And then on the other side was the grocery store. Um, that's pretty much, oh, that, that's pretty You're close. The delicatessen was called Solomon's Delicatessen. Right. And the grocery store was a real legitimate grocery store because they only sold fruits and vegetables. This is really a fruit and vegetable store. And, and, and that grocery store eventually moved to Taylor Road with Shapiro's grocery store. And I went to school with their with her daughters. So this was a two family house, do you remember the yeah, yeah, All right. The only reason I remember okay. The only reason I remember it I was older than it was a two. It was a two-family home. We lived on the second floor. The the Londons lived on the first floor. They were tenants of my parents. 
And it, the, it had a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, one bathroom and two bedrooms, and a large porch in the front of it, like oh, in the, the front, front porch. Right. Front porch. And also, there was a third floor, an attic. Remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah, there was an attic. And when I well, this, I think is important. When I must have been about five, my parents decided to refurbish that attic space and make it a playroom for me and Eleanor. And we, I know we had a pinball machine there and different toys, games, whatever. And also, another thing I think that's really important is my mother, as, as long as I... Had a live-in maid, and that's where she stayed. Her name was I. She stayed upstairs in the third floor. What? What was her, her name? name? Was Irene? That uh, the one I remember. She may have had uh, ones that I didn't remember. And after Eleanor was born and came there, I don't know what happened, but she left. Fine, and we moved. It was just before we moved. It had nothing to do with Eleanor. Eleanor was absolutely the, the cutest baby. And my recollection of that incident was, I knew she, my mother was going to have a baby. Of course, I didn't know what it meant. But then, when... when Wait, how old were you? I'm sorry, I'm behind. How old was I? How old were you? Three. Okay. Or so. And when, when they brought Eleanor in, I don't remember, it was my mother was probably carrying her. And all I could see is a blank, oh, somebody wrapped, something wrapped in a blank. And then I finally got to the seal. And, uh, uh, another thing I want to add, um, when we left that house, I was very young. I was like two or three, but the reason we recall it as after we moved out, my parents let my grandparents live there. So we would go there all the time. So that's how I remember it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have. How old were you when you moved to Clara Jobel then? I was seven. I, I was four and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. what, well, they four. moved in September, didn't they? Right, September 17th. Wow. Uh, okay, so you hadn't turned four yet. No, no. Right? I was under three. Yeah, I was three. Now, um, it was the thing that was in the house when we first lived in it had a coal burning furnace. And then the big deal came. My parents got a gas furnace. So there was a room that was full of coal. The guy would come and deliver the dirty coal and whatever. In the basement. <laughs> yes, in the basement, near the furnace. Well, you said in a room. It was in the basement. And do you want more information about this being there, living there? Well, uh, the question is, what is your earliest childhood memory? So a little yes. bit. No? Oh, no? We did that already? No, no. I can't. I, I, can't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, did you want my, I, I'll tell you what it was. was. I did have one childhood memory. My, I, the first toy that I got was a little cast iron or steel truck. And I remember I was on the porch and I dropped the truck over the railing and I was really upset. But I, then I, I'm, I'm not sure who went with me, but I went down and the truck was there and it wasn't broken and I still have the truck. Wow. Right, right. It was, really? Didn't we, I have it for a while for my boys and then you, 
because it, I don't know why I found it here. I'd like to see it. Oh, it's a little, tr it's a little it's cast iron. It's this big. It's this big. It was like red and green, but the paint was almost Mom, off. what about your earliest childhood? Oh, well, my earliest childhood is living on Claridge Oval. I don't remember ever living in a, a crib or anything mm -hmm. being on Ullman Avenue. I remember Claridge Oval. And I remember once when it was being built, uh, it must have been a Sunday because my dad took us over there, and it was just the shell of the house, and there were kids climbing on the on the wood and the wood. And were there houses came. next door yet? Or you... No, no. Well, there was further down, two doors down mm -hmm. was the um, what was their name? Kaufman. Kaufmans. Mm -hmm. And then across the street there was a house. But uh, real close to us was built later when we were even in our teens, or even older than that, when we were in college. Uh, before you ask another question, well, I, I want to go back to living on, on Ullman Avenue, because I think that was very interesting. We lived on Ullman Avenue. The Londons who lived below us had a boy whose name was Larry. And we became friends, and I, you know, I was four, three, four. Now, five years old, I have to go to school. So my mother takes me to a school that's on 123rd, that's about five or six blocks from where we live. We just had to go down the end of Ullman and walk down. And my recollection is she walked with me, she didn't drive, so she, we walked. And we went, and she took me to Chesterfield School. And um, so I started school. Now, two things. I, I, I don't know how much after, how many days or a week or so after I went to school, because I'm sure she walked with me for a, a week or two. Then after that, I went to school by myself. I might have gone with Larry and walked, but I walked to and from school myself, with a friend or without. So that's really something that's, when you think about it today. The other thing is, about two blocks before the school was a, th a movie theater the Ritz. called the... the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Ritz Theater, right? So we, so when I, I must have been six then, I think. Larry, most of the time, and I would go to the movies by ourselves, and at that time, the theaters changed movies. Like on Wednesday and then on Friday or Tuesday and Friday. So all the movies, we, it didn't matter, there was no such thing as kid movies or whatever. We would go to the movies by ourselves and we get received, I received a quarter. Ten cents for the movie, ten cents for popcorn, and five cents for candy. And the movies always showed cereals. So they had these cereals, and the guy would be falling off a cliff, and the next week he flew back up or something. Got Is that it. where they got the term cliffhanger? So we would go to the movies by ourselves, and that, as I look back, is pretty wild. Okay, describe the personalities of your family members, and we don't mean your kids, just the family that you were growing up with. Well, I think... Um, my father was um, more, well, no, I can't say more serious than my, he was more of the discipline area than my mother. And in my dad's eyes, I could do no wrong. In my mother's eyes, Melvin could do no wrong when we were little. And um, I can't explain their personalities. My mother was a very likable person, and she, if you kids even remember, she was a very loving and giving person. 
And my father was stricter, and uh, he was business-like. And um, I, going back with my father and my uncle, when my uncle Nate and my dad somehow, they got a hold of a horse, Morvich. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, you don't know Morvich, the horse? Even the cousin's kid about it to this Did day. Did you ever meet him? I, I wasn't born yet. He wasn't married yet. So Dad. you're, this is all here. And they had, that's what, you ask cousin Renee, you ask cousin Caroline, and they'll tell you, and Ruthie and Bebe, and they had a horse, and they had a cart, and they had sold produce before they went into their other business. It was a produce business. So Morvich was the horse. A horse. That would I know nothing. Pull the of, cart. Right he had pulled the cart. They said I would know I was not around because my dad got married later in life. In fact, how old was he? He was like thirty-one, okay. thirty-two, or thirty-five even. Oh. He <laughs> lived with Uncle Nate and Uncle Nate's four kids. Well, my dad, I believe, was thirty-two. Because he was 10 years older this than my mother, question. who was 22, when she, they got married. Because yeah, right? he was her how boss. Did, wait, wait, how did they meet? You didn't, you know? I, I think he, mother worked for him. In the hat factory. No, what? no, she worked in a <laughs> yeah. hat factory, but my dad didn't have the fa her hat oh, factory. <laughs> wait, are you sure about that? She worked in a hat factory, but I don't he think He was her where, boss. No, mm -hmm. Yeah, but not in a hat factory. Well, then where was where? he her boss? He was her I boss. I don't remember where he was her boss. Where was I, he? I could, uh, let's see. It, in the gross. Well, wait, he had a produce cart. If you want, I, do you want to, okay. does this keep going? You want yeah. To, okay. My, uh, this is, I'm kind of think, putting stuff together, but... After my dad, um, and I guess they had the horse. I never knew about the horse. I mean, I did know about it, but I never saw the horse or anything. They started, I think they had a store of some kind. I don't know what kind of store it was. But then they, somebody convinced them to go into the... Not vending, but game, like games where you would put money into a machine. And the first machines they had were like little gun machines. And they paid, again, this is, I'm pretty sure about this. I'm not pretty sure about it. They paid like $45 a machine. And I don't know how many they bought. So, and they w went to like stores, like, you know, super, I'm not a supermarket, but a store that people w would go shopping for whatever, uh, a deli or whatever. And they would tell these people, well, if you let us put this in, we will take care of it, we'll collect the money, and you will get 50% of the money from the machine. I knew so, nothing about this. So they, so they put it in a couple stores. They went there a week later or so. They opened it up. There's $70 in these, like, or something yes. like that. They give the guy half, and they end up getting their payment, enough money to pay for the machine. So they say, wow. This is a really good deal. So that's how I think they got into the uh, coin-operated music and, and... I totally and, didn't know anything how they started. Well, the reason I probably know more about this yes. is what... I was, before my dad died, I was working for him and Uncle Ray, and I would be with him a lot. I mean, I got to really know my dad a lot. You know. So I would hear these stories. But, but you don't know about yeah, them. But I'm didn't. guessing, because I don't know. But I think maybe my mother worked for them when they started into, or they were into this 
uh, coin-operated machine business. I thought it's Linda, Susie, and I all think it was something at the hat factory she worked. And he was a manager. Is that yeah. not true? Well, no, why? That's he never I worked at a I hat. know he yeah. worked at a hat factory. When David worked, when David lived there, she said, "I that's when, I worked at a hat factory." When who? When I was dating. I saw his parents. Okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what kind of games did you two play growing up? Well, I played. Well, I had my. My one good friend lived close to me, Gloria, and we would play house, and we would play dolls, and we would play, you know, mommy, the usual girl games. And then some of the kids on the street sometimes would have baseball, and we'd play in the street until the police came. <laughs> well, we're, you're, we're talking young. Yes, yeah. I, I recall, I mean, I had toys. Yeah, trucks and different Tinker kind toy. of toy. I didn't get a Tinker Toys or Erector sets until I was 10, 12, you know, older. And I think when we were young, we started to learn how to play cards, with like playing war and fish and some of those kinds of games. And um, I don't... I don't have a great recollection of spending a great amount of time doing this. Just yeah, most of that stuff was creative stuff, not set that games and stuff. Monopoly we did have. Yeah, but you didn't play Monopoly until you were eight years old, nine well, years old. Yeah, a bit, but most of the stuff was, we did creative things. We made up our own things, which kept us busy. Did you have chores around the house? Did you get allowance? Was what were your responsibilities? Not when I was little. I don't remember getting an allowance. Uh, yeah, well, going back to toys, they built that room up in the third floor. We had a pinball machine. We had a store. Like, it now, was a big store. How, wait, how old were you when you remember that? Because Eight, I, I was six, seven, six, five, and six. And I was three? I never remember a pinball. The only thing I can remember that room was after we moved out and Uncle Doody had his workshop up there. I never remember games being up there. Well, you have to trust me, I guess. Well, I trust you because I, <laughs> I mean, remember. Well, but I can't think of all the things that we had in there. But the pinball machine was the big deal. And, because, and it was there because my dad was in the business and they had them. And, and some other stuff, they, they really made that room really nice for us. I I think, I'm sure there was a dollhouse in there, too, by the way. I don't remember. But then again, I may have been just like three, three and a half. You, and I don't remember that, the toys up there. Maybe you never let me go up. <laughs> <laughs> what was school like for you when you were growing up? Well, I didn't go to school till I moved to you know, Clara Joval, and I started Canterbury School, where my granddaughter is going to start in September. And I remember my kindergarten teacher's name was Miss Bradford. My first grade teacher's name was Miss Lancashire. My second grade teacher's name was Miss Grimm. My third grade teacher was Miss Stevens. Alexander. No, I didn't have Alexander. Oh. <laughs> and my fourth grade teacher was Miss Hamlin. And then, because the school was too small for us, we had to be transferred for fifth and <clears throat> sixth grades to Fairfax School, which <coughs> was on Lee Road near Silsby. And all I can remember is that school there. and. <clears throat> And I remember, and I remember some of my teachers from there. And I remember one teacher. Well, most of them were not married women, and they, you know, were very strict. And one teacher, you know, in those days, it was very unusual for women to smoke. One day, we found a pack of cigarettes in the cloakroom of my teacher, Miss Havelcheck, and. <laughs> And everybody it's thought it was so funny. funny. Here, my mother, here, my mother smoked, and that was okay. But a teacher wasn't supposed to smoke. All right, Mel, you're on. 
Do you remember your teachers from Canterbury? Yes, but I'm not going to name them. It's not important. What was your overall feeling about school? Wait. What did you like? I was going to tell you something else, but I, uh, of course, transferred from Chesterfield to uh, uh, Canterbury in, uh, in the second grade. And that was kind of, I guess, traumatic. I, I mean, you just have a whole new set of people. And, uh, but I had, didn't have much trouble adjusting. And I recall my second grade teacher's name was Miss, I'm not sure if it was Miss Cornell or Mrs. Because her name, her, when, when I started, she was not married. And like somewhere along the line, she got married and had a different name. But, but I was going to tell you another story about when I lived on on uh, Ullman. I, I, I went to kindergarten and then I was in the first grade and I matriculated to the second grade. And then and I had a girlfriend. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, you know, some cute girl in the grade. And she lived on my street. But What was her name? I don't remember her name. Uh, Anyway, so then I moved to the high, I moved and I never saw her again until I think high school. And when I saw her in high school, I said, "How could I really like to like this girl?" <laughs> you want to hear Next. about me and whatever <laughs> in your love life? No. <laughs> Okay. No. Anyhow, it, it it. I don't know why you even touch it. That now I think about it. Cross it out. <laughs> I said, "What rewind about it?" I remember at at Canterbury School we had a principal, Miss Hess, and when it was your birthday, and she remember or she had a list of our birthdays. She called us in the office. She gave me a pack, and I think. Okay. I may have a pack of Audubon uh, Club pictures of birds, and I think I may still have that upstairs someplace. Mm -hmm. It was it was it really re made me feel wonderful, you know, that I was made to feel special. And also, we had a cross guard, an old old gentleman in a policeman uniform, and his name was Sam, and he didn't have any teeth in his mouth, but he would. <laughs> Say hello to us, and we all love Sam, the policeman. Sam. Yeah. Um, and when you got to high school or middle school, well, I oh, want to stop sorry. for a second because this I when I was eight years old on December seventh, nineteen forty-one, the war started. The bombing of Pearl Harbor, and that was very <coughs> traumatic for us, and it changed a lot of the way people people did and what what we did during that time, and um, like we would be have we collect tin cans and cans and things for the war effort and paper sales and. We did all these kinds of things for uh, the war effort, and our parents, we would, you know, always listen to the radio, what was going on, and whatever, and... Also, in school, they would, they would have, on Fridays, you could buy defense stamps. They were a dime, I think, in a Order. The one was red and one was green. I remember, and we used to buy them, and that went to the government, I guess, for the for the war. Yeah, it went to buy war bonds. War, and, and then if you collect enough, you had enough to buy a war bond, right? And I remember, of course, in those days, we didn't have television when we were young, and our parents hid a lot. For, they didn't want us to hear all this, what's going on in the war. And I think until 
you know, Uncle Doody was in the Army and the infantry, and one day I came home and I found out that he was a prisoner. But I was older. I was about eight, I think, then. Did he nine. sign up for the war or did what? he get recruited? Is that no, he, he was, they, um, whatever, whatever. Drafted. 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 Yeah. He was drafted. Yeah. And I remember coming in, we had, Mel and I adored him. Well, he was like a brother to, to Mel. And when I heard he was a prisoner of war, I remember running up the stairs getting hysterical. And then, and then you know, we, they kept in touch. And I guess through the War Department, they would send letters to Grandma, my grandmother, and, and my mother. I, I remember reading letters. I didn't read them. They read them to us. And it was who has those letters? Where are they? Where my mother probably had she probably threw them out when prisoners of war were able to write letters. No, the government I think wrote to keep in touch. Yeah, I think he was, a, but it had to go through the government. Had to read it. Wait, where was he a prisoner of war? Exactly in Germany, mm -hmm. and and I think the government had to read through the letters and then send them. They had. How a, long was he there? You know, I really don't know. I don't think it was more than a year or so. And he was, he unfortunately had frostbite. And if the war wasn't over and they released him, he could have lost his feet, I remember my mother telling me that, which was scary. Well, first of all, we didn't mention Uncle Doody in the beginning. Right. But my Uncle Doody was born in this country. He was my mother's youngest brother, uh, only brother, and he was actually 10 years older than me. So when I was a child, you know, a child, and even all during my life, he was like a big brother to me, and he was just a wonderful person. And, and I, I don't know, uh, I know when we got the notice, or somebody got the notice, told us, we were devastated, I mean, because that wasn't a good thing, <laughs> to be in a prisoner of war. Anyway, he got back, went to college. At Ohio, you... Did he, ever, I did remember... he ever say anything else about while he was in the Pardon? camp? Did he ever talk about... No, I don't remember him talking about it, do you? Uh, sure. Well, I wait, do. one thing I remember... He wrote a whole thing about it. But I remember what, he, what my yeah. grandpa said when Uncle Judy, when when my grandmother came over and my mother and my aunt, he said, quote, I want you to know your Uncle Judy was born nine months to the day that your grandma came home. He made sure. <laughs> I mean, in those days, what does that mean? but I didn't, I didn't know that until I was older. He how didn't tell me that till I was older. How many years were they apart? Who? Who was apart? The grandparents. The, the, uh, I think it was five or six years. I think it was a long time. Because my mother said when she saw Grandpa, she wouldn't go near him because she didn't know who he was. Because she was a little girl when they left. Right. And then he, he, you know, and, she, and then there was this man there. Right. And supposedly... You know, he was, at that time, he was a house decorator, painted houses, and I didn't know when he was, and people, you know, who told me this, Yefim, when he was in Russia, he was considered a bright man, and he was in charge of a sugar business or something. Huh. And I didn't know this. Yefim told me some of this from his father. Who's Yefim? Yefim is the relatives of ours that came over from Russia about 30 years ago. They've only been here 30 years. And it's on my grandpa's side, because his name is Friedman, F-R-I-D-M-A-N, or Friedman. Okay, when you guys were growing up, what were the activities or sports you did? What kind of fads do you remember, clothes, hairstyles? Well, I remember at school the girls would jump rope and we would play on the jungle gyms and I remember one of our favorite days of the year, or two favorite days. One favorite day was Halloween. We were allowed to dress up in costume and parade around the school. And Christmas time 
I liked, even though we were Jewish, my father said it was okay, we would go caroling through the halls and singing. And to this day, some of the Gentile people say, I remembered them better than they did. But I remember, because it was a special day. And also, I remember when we were in elementary, I must have been in Fairfax, that we could go down to Severance Hall and listen to concerts. And Dr. Rudolph Ringwall was the conductor, the children's conductor for, you know, children's um, music. And I remember going, we didn't sit downstairs, we sat up in the balcony. And then also we could go to the art museum in a bus. And it was really exciting. And I remember, and I still want to ask, if, in, at the art museum, they had a miniature room, which I loved. And I don't know what happened to it. Okay, Mel's turn. Go ahead. Ask the question again. Continue. What kind of things did you like to do? Sports Play war. or sports when you're older? Sports wait, activities wait, wait, in high school. When I was older? Yeah. What kind of like, well, how old are we talking about? Well, 12, 13, 15. Middle school, high school. What kind it of? It wasn't clubs? called middle school. It was called junior high. Junior high, high school. What kind of? Well, things? okay, that's that's a long sports. period of time. I, I I never played school sports. I mean, sports for a team of the school, because I just wasn't good Except enough. in college, wink, wink. Pardon? Except in college, wink, wink. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, but we belonged to Park Synagogue, and Park Synagogue had a basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on the basketball team. A park synagogue. And we would go, we would play other temples around. Then we went to Canton and some other places. And we played. The guy that was in charge of it, his name is Saul Stillman, who was a real great teacher and a lawyer, as it was his real work. And so that was one thing. Did you have a mascot name? A team name? No. A team name I don't or anything? Think. Did you have uniforms? Oh, yeah, we had uniforms. They were gold and maroon, actually. Like the Cavs. What position and did you play? Anyone? <laughs> now, Center. what position did you play, David? <laughs> we didn't have positions. <laughs> who, who, who taught you? Oh, yeah. Who I, taught you to play basketball? Pardon? Mr. Stone. They're kids. No, but did who did taught me how to play basketball? Who, who else played basketball before you? Who else played? He doesn't. Know. In your family. Oh, my mother. Our mother. Our did mother. She play, did she play with you? Like no. no. Once she was married, she yeah. did this when before she was married. She loved sports. She played basketball. She found a tennis racket. And she brought it home, and my grand and she hid it under the bed, and my grandfather found it, and he said, "Girls don't play sports." And he took it and he broke and it. And hit it over her head. No, no, that was the, the dish over your head when you weren't listening to Dad. What happened here? Now we understand. Wait, we were it. in the kitchen, and Mel was supposed to do something. How old are you guys? He was probably 12, 13. 12. And, and he was supposed to do something, and he didn't. And my dad had a dish in his hand, and he... He's wiping a dish. And, and he hit him over the head, and he had to rush him to the, uh, the neighborhood. Neighbor had a, was a doctor to... He, he had stitches. stitches. In my head, in my forehead. Wow. That's really Anyway. <laughs> that's, that's pretty... Yeah. Hey. Mel did now, this. <laughs> as... Um, if you're talking about when when I was in when I started junior high school, when I started junior high school, Roxboro Junior High. When I started Roxboro Junior High School, <laughs> there were three high schools, uh, junior high schools in Cleveland University Heights. One was Roxboro, and the other one was one was called Roosevelt, and one was called Monticello. Monticello. Okay. Anyway, at that time, kids had sororities and fraternities, and I must have been 13, and 
I, I joined a fraternity called Delton's, and we had meetings and at people's houses, and the girls had meetings at the girls' houses, and then we would meet and at the girls' houses. company, the fraternity. Someone we did dances, and we and uh, we had a real social life. Which included going to the Cedar and Lee Theater every Saturday. What about after Florence Shapiro? Tell me. Uh, I'll tell them that too. Uh, um, so we go to Cedar and Lee. We all sit up in the balcony and just make noise and talk and just have a great time. And and we never got thrown out because a friend of ours was father on the theater. So, you know, it was really an interesting social life, and which then kind of moved into high school, and it was kind of basically, it was a little different, but that's where you had real close, made real close friends. Like Florence Shapiro? Huh? What? Like, like Florence, Florence Shapiro? Shapiro? Yeah. Oh, Florence Shapiro. Florence Shapiro had a dance, a social dance teaching School. And I was 13, and most the the kids who went there who went went to Shaker School. And this friend of mine, Arthur Phillips, and me decided that might be fun to go there, and maybe we could meet some new girls. And but. They, you had, they had a rule, you had to wear a tie and a jacket. So we decided we're going to go there. Our parents, we had to take a streetcar and a bus to get there. It was on, uh, on 105th and Chester. Ooh. In the, in the, uh, you, oh, what was the name of that hall? The, uh, some big hall. So we go. But we decide we're only going to wear sweaters. We're not wearing the suits and ties. So we go there, and we 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 get in, and we walk in, and it's just starting. And, and so someone, maybe her, says, "Oh, we said we want to join this." And they always needed boys. There was a lot of girls, but they always needed boys. So I said, "But everybody here has to wear a tie and a jacket." So we said to her, we'll be glad to join, but we're not wearing ties and jackets. We're going to go just the way we are. And then what happened? They let and we think she said, fine. And we were, and, Rebel. Then, and then it kind of got more relaxed in the dressing code, actually. And we did meet lots of people, and, and, and it was fun. And did you have favorite dances and songs? Like, what kind of music were you listening to? Uh, you whatever it was. Whatever the popular mu music was, we learned how to... What was that? I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> I mean, there were so many songs coming out all the time that... Who was your favorite? What was my favorite song? Yeah, or your favorite, favorite performer? performer. Who was my favorite performer? Yeah. What did you like to listen I, to? Wait, wait, let me finish my thought on, on this. And now, uh, so... Um, we learned, you know, the two-step, the, the, the uh, uh, fox truck, that was the fox truck, and uh, how to uh, waltz, and all those kind of, and how to jitterbug, and, you know, and so, and we, and they played whatever happened to be popular. And what year week. do you think this was? Hmm? What year do you think this was? I was 13, so it would be 46, maybe. And so you asked me about my, who was my favorite. I would say, I would say Frank Sinatra. He Andy? was really b big. Well, my right? favorite at my time, because it was a little after that, was Eddie Fisher. Frankie Valley was that? No, yeah, no, but later. Eddie Fisher, and, and the ironic thing about this, about 20 years ago, he came 
to the executive club, and all of our girls came, and we had our these. They used to put up magazines, the Hip Parade, which had all the songs and the the month or the week. Some of the girls still had their <laughs> magazines, and they brought it, and they had Eddie Fisher sign. Why did he look? He looked old, and he was a little not with it too much. But it was we had highlights like that, and and I too belonged in junior high to a sorority. And but our sorority was governed by the Jewish Center or somehow because we had to have a woman come and you know to oversee the meetings. What was the name? Did you the, the name was it uh, was A B D. Always be devoted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called. And I remember. Sister Mary I, Francis. I, wait a minute. I I got in, and my best girlfriend Gloria didn't get in. Uh -oh. <laughs> and so when the meeting was at my house, our house, my mother went to the this lady who was our ex uh, overseer, yeah. and she said, "Please, you've got to take this girl in because she's upset, and Eleanor is upset. You've got to take her in." So for some reason, they voted on her, but I wasn't allowed in the room. And they came back, they said, yes, Gloria can be a member, and they called her, and she was a member. And I remember going back when we were younger, we had the Fairmont Theater, which was also owned by the same people that owned the Cedar Lee Theater. They were brothers. Gloria and I would go every Saturday, but we would walk up to Fairmont Circle, and we would go there and we'd have 15 cents, 10 cents for candy. At the Fairmont Theater, you were not allowed to have pop popcorn. He didn't because it messed up this place. So we could have candy. And then the campus drug was right next door. And they had a soda fountain there. And Gloria would always want to go there because she would get a, a hot foot sun. I wouldn't eat anything. And <laughs> And and she and I remember that. And then on the corner, be where Peter Danford is now, was a place called uh, Mitniks, and they had you know bric-a-brac for the house. So it was Hanukkah time, and Gloria and I decided we're going to go in and pick out a present for each other. Well, it really wasn't a store for presents, for, but they had. A miniature, two miniature tea sets. One was in blue, one was in pink. So she went in first and bought a present and packed, wrapped it up and came out. And I went in and we both picked the same thing. We, the one uh -huh. she gave me was in blue and the one she had was in pink. But what I want to say overall, and Mel and I have discussed this, we really had a nice, wonderful, warm, pleasant upbringing. Uh, except for Mel going to Chesterfield, for we all stayed in the same school system, had the same friends for till we went to college, and Mel and I felt we had a wonderful, wonderful childhood, and we, well, I'm sure there were ups and downs, but most of it we remember was really good. How much longer are we doing this? <laughs> Why? Well, the reason I we'll take a break if you want. You no, know, yeah, that's a good idea. But what I'm thinking because. There are whole areas that we never oh, talked right. about. The cottage, oh, right. which is a whole thing. I don't know where your and the, questions. And Passover grandmas. We've got yeah, we've got questions about holidays. And uh, yeah. I so mean, you want to take a little break? I'm afraid time. if we break, we're gonna you know. What are we gonna okay. do? I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Break? I don't know about right, you. Go to the bathroom. Well, Jimmy has to switch tapes, so yeah. So this is a good time to break. Okay. okay Tapes rolling. Wait, wait. Oh, Evan's showing up. Shelly used to work in the store, and I she, she bought me a lot of them, and I still have them. She didn't work. Either. All right, you guys ready? Okay, wait, okay. wait. Do you want to talk about? Okay, you you our time running. Right, no, no, no. Cottage, cottage. Talk about, talk about the cottage. 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 Yes. Okay, cottage. Okay, Madison. We would. Yeah. We would go there Susie the day after ass. school let out. We would pack up my dad's right. car, and there wasn't a, you know, a station wagon or anything. We'd pack up the car, and we would go there, and we would stay the whole summer, and come back the day before the day after the day before Labor Day or Labor Day, and then school would start. And 
My dad, who's coming? A little kid. Evan. It must be Evan. A little kid. My dad. I thought, Evan's hey, little still kid. Rolling? He's hardly a little kid. Okay, my dad. Here, I'll, does he need the TV? We take off with switch I'll with. Again. Are we still recording? Would switch with my uncle one weekend. One, my dad would come Wednesday and stay through the weekend, and my uncle Nate would come Saturday. And then vice versa. So they were there not not as long, but their hus their wives and the children were all there for the whole summer. And I remember it was it was wonderful there. And we used to have beach parties. And I used to have when I was older have kids come out there. Well, what friends. what exactly when you say Madison, what do you mean? Madison on the lake, but Ohio. What, what were you? Where our cottage was. Cottage. Yeah. She said cottage. Our cottage, which was named Happy Days, and when did you guys? Z. When was Wait, no, Shh. no. My earliest recollection of Madison was we would go out and visit my uncle Nate and Aunt Lottie and their kids because they had a cottage out there, and I probably was three or four, four or so, five. Maybe. I was then. I think we rented a cottage once for a week or two, and and, and the cottage we had had two things that you don't hear a lot about these days. One is to get water, you had to have a pump. You had to pump the water out of the ground, and the other thing it had an ice box. You had to have an ice box. There were no refrigerators. But anyhow, I think when I was five or six when my parents bought this dilapidated cottage on Lake Road, right across from the, uh, from the lake, and so I said, I, I don't know, it, somehow I must have said something, because it really was, th there were no walls, there were just, the, they had the studs and whatever. And so my dad said, no, we're going to fix this up. So they did, they fixed it up, and it was very nice, <laughs> and, and then they added on to this really nice living room on the front. And but that's they, when we were already in our teens. How long did it take to drive there? A f an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Right, because there were, no, there were, we used freeways. to go Route 20, or Route 84 to 20. Still, I thought it was longer than and that. And we didn't, until they had the freeway. Uh -huh. then, Which, right. Right. And the freeways were there after we left. Right. Uh, we weren't even there. So it, that's how long it took. And... We had friends from families around there. Now, the important thing was there were probably 16, 20 families that were Jewish that had these cottages all around where we were. So my parents had this whole group of people, and we were friend became friendly with their kids. And we would go out. And we had some rules. One rule was we couldn't go swimming until after the 4th of July because we would, could get polio. Infantile paralysis. It wasn't called polio then. That's right. Is that a real thing that you, you could get it before the 4th of July? Well, they, it was no, a bubble mice. It was, was a bubble well, mice. They thought Nobody that the bacteria it. from the lake could give you probably give you something. There must you don't know. We don't know. I don't know. Okay, but that was but one it was of the called roles. infantile okay. paralysis. It wasn't until later that they called it polio. Zika. Yeah. Okay, and next what was the next rule? You said there was rules. The next rule? Let, let's see. Well we couldn't go swimming. We couldn't go into the lake unless our one of our parents were there to watch us. So uh, we but it turned out to be really fun. And remember, during those, that time, you didn't have air conditioning. So living in the city was kind of hot. And so it was really nice. It was and cooler out there. We, and we waited until the corn was ready, and we would go buy fresh, fresh corn, corn, and we'd pick corn, and, we'd, and then we would go to Geneva on the Lake to 
play different games and stuff. And we also have a little game. Was there a donut place there? there? Hmm? Donut place? There was. A, in Geneva on the Lake. But oh, yeah, Madsen's Donuts. Yeah. I also, when we were young and in Madison, they had, um, there was a Dance. roller rink, a nice a roller rink, building with a roller rink, and then there was a place with a dance hall. They had a dance hall, and and when I was younger, they had the, they would have bands come and play, and music, and people would dance and whatever, and that's where I got my first job. I worked at the dance hall when I was 13 years old, and my job was to take tickets for people because it was a every dance you had to have a ticket to dance. And then to take a rope and rope the people off the floor. And I got paid 25 cents an hour. Okay, and I remember they had, across the way was the, the general store. In those days, they allowed slot machines in the stores. And also, it was during the war, we were not allowed to get, you couldn't get bubble gum. So I would go every morning to this general store and say, did you get bubble gum today? And she would say, no, no, no. Finally, she said, yeah, we got bubble gum. To the day I had kids, I went there. The lady saw me. She calls me bubble gum. And then well, on nickname. Mondays, and Mondays, if you went to the lake store, the man who was in charge of the machines would empty the coins. And if the coins would fall on the floor, he said, Take them, kids. You can have it. And my cousin Jerry was always there. <laughs> Jerry was <laughs> next. He was the. He, he was, was a penny pitcher. He was Peck's bad boy, and he would and he would have me go in. He said, go get How was he your cousin, Jerry? Who? Jerry is my uncle Nate's son. It was my oh, first my. cousin. Oh, okay. And he would have me go in there because they wouldn't give it to the older kids, but the little kids he would give the money to. He used you, mm -hmm. okay. and I would go in there for <laughs> my my, un, my dad's brother Nate and his wife Lottie uh, have had three children, uh, four children, three girls and one boy. Uh, two mm -hmm. older girls, one girl, uh, uh, Jerry, and then another girl, and they would spend the summer out there. Of course, they were a lot older, and they, you know, they were teenagers and stuff when, uh, when I was young. It was, what were their names? There was Ruthie, Uni, Jer uh, Jerry, and then Ellen. But because she was the youngest, they'd call her Bebe, Baby, and she couldn't pronounce it, so she'd say Bebe, and that's how my cousin Ellen got her name, Bebe. And yeah. none of are they alive? None of them. No, none of them. Alive. That whole family. They're all. Even their spouses are gone. Ooh. Everybody's gone from that family. Well, we don't know about Jerry's. Yeah, Jerry. We read his funeral. You no, Jerry's know. spouse. Oh, well, his spouse. It was his second or okay. third wife. <laughs> it was second or third. <laughs> and, anyway. Uh, and but we used to have a wonderful. I mean, it was. We would get up in the morning, put on our bathing suits, stay in them until it got cool. And we, in fact, when we would see people in Cleveland, they'd say, I don't recognize you with regular clothes because we were always just in bathing suits and casual and we just had a great time out there. So nice. And we used to go pick corn and we, I mean. But your dad just sounds to drive, drive back to the city. Right, he would go Monday mornings and stay either till Wednesday and come out, or Saturday, depend. And we didn't have a phone then. We didn't get a phone in our cottage till you kids were born, because then my mother insisted upon it. But when we were little, we didn't have a phone. We had to go to the. We no. Oh yeah, we had to go to the general store and use their pay phone. And there was no way real. Uh, the Grossmans had a phone. Uh, eventually, and they and sometimes they would, you know, we could use their phone. But even my aunt Lottie and Uncle Nate didn't have one until later. Were on. they on the same street as you? Yeah, right on. They were on Lake Road, but they were there was our, and then there was a street called Hazel, I think, and then there, and oh, I. What was it called? Hazel 
or Hazelwood or something. And I must say, I had, there was a lady who lived out there, her fam, a family, her name was Belle Miller. She's the one that taught me how to knit. And she was a good teacher, and, she, and I remember to this day how she taught me to knit. I saw one of her, um, oh, what's his name? He's the oral surgeon. Um, Alprin? No, 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 no. no. Huh? Does it you guys did Freed? Huh? No, free. No, 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 free. No, these are Older. way before. All right, let's focus. The one, he, he, it's his aunt that taught me. You mean okay. told me to talk? Tell me about when you met David okay. and when you knew you were going to get married. Okay. I, your father had, was in a fraternity, was KDG, and they would have meetings at different houses, and whenever the meeting was at our house, David would come. He didn't. He didn't go to Heights High, but they did let some of the Glenville boys in the fraternity. Well, I had my eye on David. I said, oh, he's cute. And I would listen at the ra in the radiators to what's going on in the, in the meetings <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> and so when, so they went to college, we went to college, and it was on Yom Kippur Eve. We had just finished dinner. And Mel and Eileen were going to go out to dinner with Peter Lewis and Toby. And they said, David's in town. We should fix him up with somebody. So they decided I should go with him. Well, we went to a movie theater. We went to a movie. It was, it was the Shaker Theater, which is on, it was on Chagrin and Lee. I don't even know if it's still there. And we went to the movie theater, and then David said to what me... What movie was it, do you remember? Oh, I don't remember the movie. Well, you remember it. <laughs> You're lucky I remember the name of the theater. And then we went Casablanca. to... Casablanca. Wait, then he called, he was still home, and I had to go to school. So he said, let's write to each other, and we wrote to each other. And then we had a bet for the Ohio State Mission game. If Michigan won, I had to take him out to dinner. And if, if Ohio State won, he had to take me. So he came home and I came home. It was Thanksgiving weekend. And we saw, we met at Eileen and Mel's apartment. And of course, <laughs> Michigan, won, Michigan won. And I was supposed to take his, no, I'll take you out. And then, and then we, from then on, it was. And then when did you get engaged? We got engaged. Actually, it was January, it was Christmas break that I got engaged. You dated in two months? What year? Was that it? same year? It was 1956. It was 1957. Well, wait. So this first date was Thanksgiving? It's September. No, it was September. September. Wait, it was 57? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, wait, no. We met in 56, but we got married in 57. And what was Steve Ward? He was born in 58. Nine months to the day! <laughs> no, 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 15 months. Oh, wait, it was 15 months. I remember. So you were engaged within six months of starting dating? Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't tell Heidi that. It's four months. Okay, I'm just clarifying. She was, how old were you? I was 20. Okay. And we got married. I was not quite 21. She couldn't drink. And my father and mother had a sign for my, my marriage certificate. And then Stephen was born two days before my 22nd birthday. Okay. And you, where did you get married? We got married at Park Synagogue. And uh, we had a nice wedding. Okay. Big wedding. How many people came? Ever, ever, ever. How many people came to the wedding? I don't know. I, what time of the day was the wedding? It was probably 5 in the afternoon on a Sunday. And, and, that's, was, and the reason I'm asking is because that the one thing I, one of the things I noticed is the rabbi's nails were dirty. Oh right, so oh, Rabbi Cohen. That's so funny. Rabbi, it was Rabbi Cohen. Rabbi Cohen. Yeah. Rabbi Cohen. And I'm standing there looking at his wow. nails. Just a sign. <laughs> and then and then Rabbi Cohen married me again. Yeah, okay. we were all there. We're not asking about that one. Except for David. Well, all right, yeah, we're not going The there. mistake on the light. Ma, okay, let Mel, Mel's turn. I, um, the first time I saw Eileen was probably 
uh, when school started in uh, 1954. That's when I started law school. I was, but you know, we were, we would, when 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 the sorority had open houses and stuff, we would go around the guys and, and meet people. And I I met her, I saw her. That was really it was a long time after that that it was I think spring quarter of. It will be 1955. Uh, yeah, spring quarter of 55 or 54, 54. Spring quarter of 54, and, and um, I, I don't know. I, I thought I would like to go. I went out with her. I asked her to go out, and the first thing we did is go to a swim meet at Ohio State. Uh, uh, swimming pool, and we started going out, and one thing led to another, and oh, I know. It was before spring break, because with spring break, Eileen went to California for her spring break, and I went to Florida, and we talked, and, and anyway, we came back, and we were starting to get closer. And of course I was in law school, so I was really, really busy. And so we would go out from time to time. I and have to interject something. I actually knew her, met her, before Mel did. I went to a party in Shaker, and I met her at, this, what was his name, David? Well, anyways, there was a party and I met her. But I didn't know who, who it was. Then when he brought her to, to meet her, I said, oh my God, I met you at this sacred of high she's remembered. I won't tell you who she was with. I know who she was with. Chucky Newstead. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so we, so summer came, she went to New Jersey, of course, and I went home, and we wrote every day, and we started getting more, you know. Did you email her? Caring <laughs> yeah. and then we went back to school and we dated and blah 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 and then we decided to get married. We started to get, I want to know what blah blah blah. Now he starts. With we started to get married and we started dating and we decided we're going to get married and. And Wait, did you propose or did you just decide? decide. <laughs> yeah, kind of. How did you choose your propose? Yeah. Now, wait a minute, I'm going to tell you how I proposed. Well, make it okay. great. If you guys would be, let me talk. Anyway, I, I, had, I, I, I had, my parents bought a ring, cause, and they mailed it to me in, in Columbus. And, and I met her at the law school library, and we were sitting there, and I said, I mean, would you like to get married? And she said, yeah, I really would. Well, I know, we've been talking about it. I said, and I, I gave her the package, and there was a ring, and she, we got engaged. Oh, at so the law school library. <laughs> how long were you dating? How long were you dating? Like, the how long were you dating? Send it to them. <laughs> well, that was a year. In the library. In the library. And then we got married in, <laughs> in the 19th of June in 55. Mom, how were you proposed to? Huh? My mother. <laughs> how was I proposed to? His parents bought a ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. David, David had bought me a ring, and he... It was at my house, and he, he asked me if I would marry him, and I said, yeah. And, but I remember before we got engaged, and I think I told you kids the story, my, we were going to meet my future father-in-law, and my mother made chicken dinner. And, she, and, and they were there, and they were very cordial, and everything worked out fine. And um, What? Well, I was going to add with the, but then Lisa would say, you told that story already. But we're, we're About talking. the chicken feet. Mm -hmm. my, when my mother was making dinner, I said, Mom, whatever you do, don't put the chicken feet. I, I don't want him to see it. 
Well, my mother didn't listen to me. She puts down the bowl of soup with the chicken feet. I wanted to die. And my father says, oh, my God, I love those. I haven't had them in years. That's, That's where Mark gets it from. <laughs> and so, and then we worked out. And then we were commuting back and forth because we would meet on the train. And he, would, he was working in Cincinnati for Arthur Anderson. He would come on the train. We'd meet in Columbus and go home for the weekend, not every weekend. <laughs> You're being televised. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Did he go to Michigan? Michigan? Uh, yeah, of course he went to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that. He just had it. Well, I had to bring it out. Wait, so how much time do we have? We're done. Oh. All right. I want to do one right, guys. dinner. I like that. How program. long is this now? About an hour and 20 minutes so far. Yeah, we didn't get to that. We're going to have to call the one. Second edition. How we're celebrating. Oh, hush.